Welcome to another Brizzy on the Block here with JP at Brizzy. And in this Brizzy on the Block, we will be looking at a header, a very nice looking header, very simple, a uh, very minimalistic design and something that I think can quite attract the attention of a visitor to your site. So let's jump in and let's have a look at that. This is how our site looks and you can use this either as a hero image at the top of a page or you can use it in between blocks to draw attention. This is especially powerful if you have various products. For example, if you have a clothing store and you have maybe a main section or a women's section, then you can have maybe some clothing over here and then you can say here, uh, women's section or women's clothing and then the next one you can have this content on the left and since and says men's clothing let's have a look at how you can create this and at first glance you think okay this is very easy and then you start thinking oh exactly how i am how am i going to achieve this and then once i show you how to do that you're going to say ah i knew it was easy from the beginning let's go into it and let's deconstruct it quickly first and then you will see why i mean it is easy here we have a block with the image in the background which is this tennis ball and then inside this block we've got what two columns column number one and column number two and what we've done is we've set the width of this block to full width over here and then we just put the content in over here as simple as that the only thing then will be is then when we get to the end is to make sure that this will also look good both in your tablet and mobile displays let's go and build it out I'm going to bring in a new block, bring in a blank block. And because I know what my background image is, let's bring in a background image over here is the tennis ball. Select that. And I'll just put my focus point here to make sure that remains in there. Then we have to go to the settings of our block over here. And for width, we're going to put that on full width. Let me see. What did I do over here? That is 75%. So let's grab the handle here in the middle and drag it until we get to 75%. And now what we need to do is bring in the content. The first thing I will do is change the color of this column. So click on the column settings and then you go to overlay and you choose something white, reduce it. Let's make it around 50%. Now let's make it 60. Let me see, 60, 60, 61% it is. And then we bring in text. So grab our text over here and triple click in it to select everything and on my keyboard in caps I will type in improve today I'm not going to cut them into two lines I'll keep them in one line we will cut them into two lines by using padding and sizing let's see what I've done up here click on this one what is the font railway we have it on railway at 46 or 48 at black let's do the same here and it's on railway type in here 46 and then we put it on black for our weight, which is very thick. And then we have, well, I think this, let's reduce this to one at this moment. We will take care of the line height soon. Let us spacing, let's leave that. And then for our color, you can choose the color you want. I'm just going to go with this one that is currently here. Again, if something doesn't look good inside a container, it probably means that you need to apply some padding and spacing in there. So let's go to the column. And then what we can do here is go to settings, more settings, and I will just link them at the very beginning and grab it and drag it in to again around here, 45. Let's just type in there, 45. I think that's going, oh, and you see there, it already pushes my sentence to the next line. Right, so we could make it a little bit more opaque. I'm going to drag that up to 70%. Right. And then what we're going to do here is just apply a little bit more space between these two lines. So let's go back to T4 topography and then for the line height, increase that 1.2. Good. And now all you need to do, my dear friends, is to apply padding to your block to make it look a little bit more structured. And I'm just going to drag this at the top to around 150 pixels, clicking and dragging. And then same for the bottom. Maybe this makes it a little bit too big. I think 130 would be better. If you want to go for that narrow effect, oh, 140, 140, well, same thing. So I basically applied exactly the same. Let's just put a block in between these two so we can differentiate between the two. I've added a blank block here, and then I'll go to reorder blocks, and I'll grab it and drag it 
there. Let's see. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. There. Okay, so now this is the one that we started with, and this is the one we are working on at this moment. So, of course, the next thing you need to do is you need to jump into your tablet and mobile. And I see this all the time. People are so confused. Why does it look so different on mobile? Mobile is just different. It's a total different experience. You just cannot achieve the same on mobile that we can do on a desktop. On a desktop, you can make these elaborate designs. You can overlay, look, you can overlay the indexes and you can make all kinds of nice animation. Uh, off the topic, I've seen quite a number of other products on the market that have excellent features for desktop. For example, it looks like a book. The pages flip like this and you have the pages move like this. One move up and the other one moves down. It doesn't work on a mobile. And normally two, three years ago, I wouldn't have made an issue out of it. But I want to tell you it doesn't work on a mobile. We've established that. But number two, 60% now of people in 2019 had access their first website on a mobile device. So it means that if you're going to design for desktop, you are actually alienating a lot of people's user experience because they're going to come to your site and they're going to access it first on a mobile. Mm -hmm. Enough of that, right? We can go totally off the rails. Let's go back and let's go look then at how this is going to look at both on the tablet and on mobile. You can go down here and click on mobile view and choose tablet. Or you can use the shortcut key, control, command, minus to go one level down. And the moment you do that, you see we've got a little problem here. This is the one at the top. And see what I've done. All I'm going to do here is grab this handle and drag it until it fits in. And why is it not fitting in? Because what happens is that in Brizzy, when you go into tablet, it makes this also a draggable column. So I'm going to drag this until I get it to the length I want. Then grab this one and drag it back. Okay, so why are we not getting to the edge? And that's all to do with the block. So let's go to the block, settings, and then here for padding on the right and the left. Drag it all the way to zero. And now you can grab this slider here and you can drag it until it hops to the next line and then just drag it back. And you should be able to get it all the way to the right. If you don't get it all the way to the right and it bothers you, there's that one little or two little pixels there that still annoys you. What you can do to overcome that is go here to your column, settings, and then here on margins on the right, you just drag it a little bit to the left. You won't see anything because I've already flushed it all the way to the left. But by doing this, you are actually extending this beyond that margin. So. Go to the margins, go to the right margin and give it a negative of around minus one or minus two, depending on how many pixels are shining through there. But it's unnecessary for me to do that. I can apply more padding again at the top and the bottom. It depends on where I'm going to be using this. If I'm using this as a Euro image, I may apply much more padding like this. Mm, cool. But if I'm using it just between spacers or as headers, then I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller a lot of impact there. Let's see if we can do this on our mobile view. Again, you can select mobile down here or control minus on your keyboard, control command minus. See what I've done here at the top? The moment you go into mobile, columns are stacked. So these two columns that are adjacent to each other are stacked. This is a decision, that decision that I talked about earlier, that when you get to something like mobile, you have to decide, do I want to stick with my original layout or is this maybe a better layout? And you just have to think, does it work? Does it look good? And the problem is often it doesn't. So then in those cases, you will have to go with a complete different layout in mobile. So what you can do here is that you can decide that you want to leave it like that. But let's try and put it next to each other. So I'm going to grab this column and drag it down. And then with this column, I'm also going to drag it down until it pops in there. But let's make a few changes here. I'll click on the text, go to text size, and I'm going to half that. So what is 46? Half is 23. And then let's drag it in again oh, like this. Okay. Wait, before I do all of that, let's go here to our column settings and we apply some padding in there. So I'm going to link that. Right. And now I'm going to drag it all the way there. And then, oh, wait. Right, And then to get it to flush all the way to the left and the right, 
we have to remove the padding of the block. So go to your block settings, and then for the padding here on the right, reduce it to zero. Padding on the left, also reduce it to zero. And once you do that, now you have this control over here. You can drag it a little. All right. Let's save the work, update it, control command S, and we go view it on the front end, see how it will look. Now here you're going to see definitely we're going to run into problems with this one when we go into our tablet and mobile displays. I think tablets should be fine. Just enable this developer mode here and let's see how it will look on our Apple device. Okay, so this is the changes that we have made. You can see a little bit difference between the two that I've designed there. And let's go to Samsung. Okay, this one looks good. I like it, this one, yeah, a little bit whacked. I should have added more padding there. This one looks fine on the Apple iPhone X. Oh man, I can go home. Salary in the bank. It looks good. Right, there you go. And again, this is just the starter. You always hear people say things, you know, presets are just starters and then you make your changes after that. But I really want to say that, yes, it's good, copy. You, you, that's the best way to learn. Go ahead and copy something like this. But then after that, start playing around, drag things out like this. And then what do we have over here? Dragon, let's do it like this, right? Okay, and, and this is how you start playing around with an idea. And the best way to elaborate on your idea is to work with things like spacing. People often are very scared of spacing, but spacing is that thing, look at this. Mm, we should have said impressive today, though I don't think impressive would have fit in there. Well, hope that was useful and not too much jibbery jabbery in between. More videos like this here on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, go over to Facebook where the community is very talkative and you can learn things there. And if you have questions, there may be people around there that can also help you out. And make sure you check out brizzy.io for news and other updates. And if you're a cloud user, don't forget brizzy.cloud. This is JP, or see you in the next video.